Hi there, I'm Peter Silva and I work for Shared Services Canada Supercomputing Group. One of the tools we are using ourselves and offering to scientists is the Saracenia Data Pump. Let's see why it's useful. Meet Alice and Bob. Alice and Bob are colleagues in different companies, far away from each other. Alice has sequenced the genetic code of a special frog and wants to send the complete sequence to Bob. When Alice tries to send the files, she might find they are stopped by a firewall, slowed by a strange route, or because there is no good tool they can both use. It would be easier if Alice could just hand her file tree off to a data pump close to her network, configured by admins to use the best placement methods and routes. The pumps can forward the files to each other to get them to Bob. The green arrows are AMQP messages from Alice to pump A for each file in Alice's tree. Alice's local pump uses SRSARA to fetch Alice's folder in black, and then announces to anyone listening that Alice's folder is on A, looking for a way to get to B and F. Pump A tells Alice that it has done its job by sending log messages back. Pump C is listening or subscribed to Pump A. Since it knows the way to B and F, it fetches the folder from A, and then lets its neighbors know that Alice's folder is on C and trying to get to B and F. This process repeats and repeats. The arrows are blue where HTTP is used instead of SFTP to transfer the data. Pumps may use different tools, but Alice does not worry about it. The forwarding is set up once by administrators and works for anyone's future data going through. About trust, the pumps are independent peers with no trust between them or central management. They just agree to pump data on each other's behalf. And of course, Bob does not have to trust Alice either. So the pumps forward the data to B and Bob picks it up from there. But what if pump E has a problem? Alice really wanted to make sure Bob got her folder, so she sent it to B and F. How does Bob decide which pump is the primary and which is the backup? Look, B isn't even in trouble here. It's just not getting any data from E. With Saracenia, Bob can listen to both B and F all the time and get Alice's folder from the pump that announces it first. With Saracenia's logging, Alice can know when each pump got the folder and that Bob still got it through pump F, even though it never went through B. If others are interested in the folder, they subscribe to it from their nearest pump. They will get the folder as it passes through their pumps on its way to B and F, so everyone gets it with only one pass through the long haul expensive network. Alice will get log messages for each subscriber and each file it is delivered to. Of course, if Alice only wants to share with Bob, the folder can be encrypted with a key that she only shares with Bob. Like a Star Trek transporter? Uh, perhaps high school biology is closer. Saracenia dissects the frog into slices and sends them across the network in parallel. Admins along the way set the number of streams and speed to match the capacity of each pipe in order to obtain the best managed performance on a mix of transfers on a network with many users. Each slice is fingerprinted, or checksummed, to allow pumps to know what they have already received. So, when a file analysis folder is changed, only that slice crosses the network again. Fingerprints also help if one needs data replicated over a large network of pumps, such as for very high reliability applications. In Saracenia, pumps can answer to more than one name. In this diagram, all the pumps answer to A as an alias. If Alice posts to A, the folder goes to all the pumps. Each pump just announces for its neighbors and propagates from pump to bump. In general, the more links are added, the fewer hops are needed to cover all the pumps. Copies happen from the first neighbor to get the data and flows naturally over the fastest path, going wherever it hasn't reached, like water into a bucket. Fingerprints stop the replication by identifying when data has already been received. As the configuration of SARA links is very straightforward, and even though it would make a very ugly diagram, it is reasonable to set up a full mesh for total redundancy and guaranteeing a hop count of one. Saracenia is just a thin layer over mature industry standard technologies. You do not have to use its tools to send or receive data. A browser or a wide variety of downloaders can be used to send, browse, or download the data. What will you be missing? You won't be notified of the arrival of your files as quickly, be able to use multiple streams, or download from redundant sources as easily. Nor will data publishers be able to easily track who received their product. The protocol to support these patterns is pretty simple. The AMQP messages we send just include slice, fingerprint, and address information. It is documented in two man pages. The 
code is smaller than the systems it replaces. Saracenia is a reference implementation and we would be pleased if there were some others. Even if you do not need to send your folder anywhere, Saracenia can be helpful. Saracenia notifications are more efficient and timely than polling a directory with ls. Alvin could subscribe to Alice's posts on the same cluster and get notified faster and with reduced load, especially if there are many Alvins. Does Saracenia actually work today? This is part of the data switching network for Environment Canada. Our existing central data pumps or product exchangers use the older stack and while it is a bit more complicated, it does let us try out bits of Saracenia. In this hybrid environment, we have demonstrated the dual server reliability strategy with the National Unified Radar Processing Servers. Two servers run independently, and the first product available is pulled into the pumps for distribution. This is much simpler to run than high availability strategies with shared disk and such, and has resulted in a drop in the rate of calls for NURP availability issues from once or twice a month to zero. For distribution, products are sent out to one data pump for consumers inside Environment Canada and a second one for the public. Last spring, a German company adopted the new methods. They went from 15 million requests per day on the public web server to 150,000, a 99% reduction. All that polling traffic consumed about 30 gigabytes per day. Now they are only using 60 gigabytes per day, the size of the data they actually want, and they are getting it faster. For the 2015 Pan Am Games in Toronto, we needed to set up temporary offices, one inside environment and the other completely outside our networks. The old stack required an FTP server with a reachable IP address at each temporary site. For multiple desks, one would need to install another layer of distribution to get them to share the same feed. Saracenia, on the other hand, leverages any WAN optimizer, eliminating the need for custom redistribution. The games venue was a temporary office with a typical client network, permitting no inbound connections. With Saracenia, the consumers just subscribe to the pump. They do not need a server. Much simpler. In last generation systems, central switch administrators needed to program every product delivered. With Saracenia, the consumers can adjust the feeds themselves, so fine tuning is much simpler as well. What's next? We will start introducing the tools to data sources gradually. With Project Alta, we are contributing to Environment Canada's MSC renewal. When it makes sense, we apply the new methods to projects. As improvements are demonstrated, it becomes official and the data sent by old methods is gradually reduced. The first way we are tackling this is by splitting the international data acquisition links among the two sites. So when one data center goes down, the other one continues to obtain some data. We are also bringing up services like DMS and NURP to the Edmonton data pump, increasing its inter independence over time. A third angle is to rearrange data collection such as radar by having them feed both centers. Another application over the next year or two will be as one data transfer service available for the Canadian government's supercomputing infrastructure being deployed collaboratively with the National Research Council as our first partner. It will be offered for use in data acquisition from instruments or third parties, as well as for general purpose use. A quick review. Data sources inject their tree once and see exactly where it goes. Consumers get their data faster with less infrastructure and can modify their feeds themselves. The same small mechanism supports a variety of very useful patterns for higher reliability, elegance, and performance. Administrators see reduced load on their data pumps from more efficient transfers, have less setup for each source, can place pumps more easily, and have better monitoring of transfers. While the tools are already faster than what we used before, work done so far has been on correctness, not performance. These deployments have worked very well and the reliability is terrific, but it is a bit of a challenge to explain and set up. We need to reduce the amount of assembly required. This work is being done by the data interchange team to solve real-world everyday problems and is simpler than the systems it is replacing. Still, it is not the most obvious way to transfer files, so it takes a little getting used to, but I hope I have shown that there are good reasons to make the effort. If you have questions, go to the website, or by all means, drop me an email. Thanks for your time.